Mm. That's mm. life. Everything is life. It happens for you. Everything is for your greatest good. Mm -hmm. No matter what it looked, you, I mean, you know, they say you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans, right? You can't, you can't control the future. I mean, mm -hmm. you can control it up to some point. You can't control what others do. You can't control anything. Someone can run a red light and that's the end of mm -hmm. everything. You know, you just, you can't, you only can control what you can control. Mm -hmm. So things don't happen to you. They happen for you. So when you, when you look at those situations, I had a same, similar situation with my pop not being around as well. And then, you know, what cracked the code for me was like, really, like, what was he going through? Mm. I, I took it from like- that perspective. Yeah, it was like, it's happening to me. Mm -hmm. He's doing this to me. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at it from his position, like my dad wasn't around and, you know, all these things happened. And then when I took a further look, his, 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 my uncle, his, his younger brother got killed. So he spent all his nights like looking for the, and the, and the cops didn't do anything. So the killer's like roaming the neighborhood. So he- Different life experiences lead to different situations, man. And he's talking about his father's situation and Kevin Hart's wishing he had more, you know, running around and playing around with his father where Jay-Z's thinking about what did my father go through? Like he must've gone through a lot more than I know. So yeah, he's explaining the reason why about his uncles and stuff like that. So it's pretty deep. He's going out in the middle of the night and he's looking for the, you know, the guy who killed his little brother, mm -hmm. right? But he has a family. Mm -hmm. So my mom is looking at him like, what you want? Mm -hmm. She don't have the language or the tools to tell him, man, we love you. We don't want nothing to happen to you. We need you, mm -hmm. right? So how it comes out to her is, where the hell you going? Mm -hmm. You got kids here. Mm -hmm. And how it sounds to him is, you want me to choose between you and my yeah. baby brother, you don't, you don't give a shit who I was supposed brother. to protect, mm -hmm. right? Now there's the fracture, right? So among other things, you know, they, they, it's relationship. And that's their relationship, not ours. Not ours as children, that's their relationship. So there's a fracture in that relationship. And you know, things happen. And you're a result of those things, so you feel you feel like, boy, dad's not around. Uh, it would have been dope if he'd have been able to take me to a baseball game and all these things. And then life on top of that. Like, he can't get a job. He's, you know, the guy at the office is cursing him out, making him feel less than a man, but he got to take it because he need the 12 50 an hour. 12 50 an hour. He need the $6.50 an hour at that time. Left, yes. you know? Yeah, your time, Jay, when you were young, it was three twenty five an hour probably. <laughs> Daisy, you're knocking 50, so, you know, I might, you know, when I became 18, it was 7.25 an hour. Now it's like 15 an hour, I believe, minimum wage. So, yeah, it's, it's a rough one. But what Jay-Z is saying is absolutely right. Like, you know, sometimes we don't consider everything our parents went through, which was less than what we've had to go through in the sense of what we've accomplished compared to them. I've come from a father who raised three kids on his own, and we all got the facts. But the fact is, you know, he tried his hardest with limitations and not even speaking English, you know, so little by little, you know, I developed my own intelligence where he couldn't reach my intelligence. And it's because, you know, of the limitations he had. I'm saying yeah. so life beating him down. So he comes home, he's defeated. He don't, you know, he pulled to pick you up on Saturday. He's exhausted. You know, like, so you, we don't, we don't factor those things in. You don't look we, at things through those lenses. Yeah, so, you know, seeing things from other people's perspective, you had to, it's the answer to you, it's a mm -hmm. long answer, but seeing things from other people's perspective and what other people are going through, you know, it helps me a lot. You know, it helps me a lot. In, in was, that, was, that, was that somebody else that helped you get to that? Like, did you, is that therapy? Is that, is that group? Is that? Part of therapy, part of being who I am, you know, but definitely a lot of, a lot of therapy. Mm -hmm. A lot of, you know, uh, you know, looking at yourself and, and, and wanting to grow. Cause we, 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 t we've been taught everything. I've been taught everything but emotional intelligence. Wow. You know, that's wow. not what you're taught as a young man growing up in the projects. You're Absolutely. taught to survive. Absolutely. I'm gonna stop right Situation there is you don't even talk to survive. You have to learn how to survive when you come from, from from the lower end. You know, I had to learn how to adapt to survival myself just by being outside playing football in the street when the cars are passing by. So, you know, it's it's a lot of levels to what he's saying there. Here because we got to pay the bills. Let's take a break. We'll be right back with more heart to heart after this. 
okay so once again i'm not sure if i'm gonna have to divide this or not but you know in case this is part four coming up so let's go on to it heart to heart peacock network uh episode two season two if you want to go watch it in its entirety if not you're here thank you for joining me and uh continue We're back. Uh, this is still heart to heart, and I'm still talking to Jay Z. I earlier told you you're 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 giving examples. You're you're a life lesson. You are giving examples of a different way to move. It, it, a, another story for me, you know, I, I probably told this story before, but I'm in the club. There was the days when you would perform and stay in the in the bar. Yeah. You yeah. know, you wouldn't leave. It yeah. was no big time. I, you perform. Thank you. You walk off the stage yeah. and go you to go. the bar. And, like, you just hanging out with everybody else. And, and you know, this Appreciate guy, you, man. The guy, he's walking to me. And, like, he's, he, he, I mean, this guy had the meanest face I've ever seen. Like, I was, like, a little scared. I'm saying this here on live TV. And he's looking, <laughs> I'm looking around, and he's looking at me, and I'm like, I'm trying to find, like, maybe he's looking. So I look, and there's nobody there. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so he's looking at me. And he's coming straight at me. And he got a long scar on his face. And he's just looking, and he's like super menacing. And I'm like, right before he came up, I was like, what's up, man? And he had the, he had like, kind of like your smile. He had the best, brightest smile, and all his teeth was white. He just smiles for yo, man, let me get this autograph on my door. Yo, can you imagine that? Like, you think he's about to attack you, and all he wants is an autograph. That's funny. <laughs> I think I've seen this in a shirt before. It's 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 a hilarious uh situation that like, you know, you're thinking this guy's coming to attack you, you know, you're not as popular as you think you are, but you know, then boom, they hit you with uh, can I get a free autograph? And that's pretty cool. That's all he wanted. That's all he wanted. That's all he wanted. But, but he was protecting himself because he's like, if I disrespect him, like he you know, he's putting all his Whatever he grew up with, his, his mannerisms or his pride on the line for his child. Yeah. And he wants this autograph. Yeah. And he's coming for this autograph, and he's thinking, if this guy plays me, it's on. It's going to be yeah. a problem. Yeah, we're going to move some furniture. You're going to move furniture. I promise you're going to move some we, furniture. Uh, I, I want him to know we off top we moving furniture. And we, the pleasant reception. And the pleasant, the pleasant just welcoming the I, reception. The idea, I just said, what's up? Change the whole thing. Change the whole thing. Change the whole dynamic. Uh, yeah. Cheers, man. Cheers. We can't ask for wine and then not drink wine, man. Yeah, cheers. Cheers, can't cheers, cheers. This stuff from no, the valley of, no, up top. Please, not, not he that. He said something, I can't say it like him, but some high He's elevation. Fucking great. And he's sure we're going to enjoy of it. Of course, it's from a high elevation. I tell him to make sure he brings the stuff from the high elevation every yeah. time. Mm. Hello. Oh, that's funny. delicious. I'm going to take a bottle of that with me. Hello. I'm definitely taking a bottle of that with me. You can have whatever you want. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and continuing. Okay, so. <laughs> The high elevation, that's what he said earlier on. That's funny. That's really funny. Okay, wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to redo that part. I felt like a book would come out. Dynamic. Uh, yeah. Cheers, man. Some furniture. Uh, I, I want them to know we off top we moving furniture. We, but the pleasant reception. And the, it pleasant, the pleasant just welcoming the I, reception. The idea, I just said, what's up? Change the whole thing. Change the whole thing. Change the whole dynamic. Uh, yeah. Cheers, man. Cheers. We can't ask for wine and then not drink wine, man. Cheers. Cheers, can't cheers, cheers. cheers. stuff from no, the valley of no, up top. Please, not, not he that. He said something. I can't say it like him, but some high he's elevation. He's fucking great. And he's mm -hmm. sure we're going to enjoy it. Of course. It's from a high elevation. I tell him to make sure he brings the stuff from the high elevation. The guy impressed him. The high elevation. You bought the stuff from the high elevation? Hello. Oh, that's delicious. I'm going to take a bottle of that with me. Hello. I'm definitely taking a bottle of that you with me. You can have whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, and continuing. And continuing the conversation, like I said, we're going backwards, right? Uh, dude, you had the opportunity to work with some of the most amazing talent, especially in hip-hop. Um, now you're seeing this younger talent emerge, right? We're seeing another generation. We're seeing uh, a different approach to the craft. We're seeing social media take over. We're seeing um, there's this new 
new ground that's able to be broke that that never existed before of opportunity through something I create. I create my own fan base. I dictate what I want to show them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, is your feeling of social media one of, ugh, ugh, I hate it, or do you embrace it? Do you embrace the new thing that these people have that are help elevating their thing, or is it a thing like you wish that it was kind of back to what it once was? No, no, I don't wish that. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't look in the, in the past like that, you mm -hmm. know? I just, whatever, whatever, I believe in evolution. Okay. So whatever form it is, you know, I accept that. For me, it's not for me, you know, it's not for me to engage I didn't grow up in that space, yeah. you know, so I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't engage in that space. What's the thing sort of... where it's like, oh God, Jay-Z's on IG and it's like, then he's gone. Is that Jay-Z or is that somebody appearing no, to no. Jay-Z? Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> no, I did it twice. So one time I, 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 Lenny, I let Lenny gas, we was drinking at uh, J. Cole's concert. Yeah. Start a page. Yeah, we okay. did like, and then it went crazy and it was like on Time Magazine the next morning. I was like, oh, this is too much, shut that down. <laughs> And then we put we put out the movie Harder They Fall, mm -hmm. Netflix. Congratulations! Joint. And it was just thank you, thank mm -hmm. you, and congratulations to you as well. Thank you, sir. That, that was amazing. I called you and told you that, so I want to tell you in the public. Yes, form. Like, I appreciate it. It was amazing, like really amazing. Thank you, man. And um, Jay Z giving Kevin Hart his flowers for the movie Harder They Fall. I never seen it. I gotta go and look into that. But I guess Jay Z had put it out, and it stars Kevin Hart. Uh, check check that out. I'll let you guys know in the comments. And then uh, this time, so I wanted to, you know, do it to promote to introduce or to, the, yes. the, the film. And, uh, and that was it. it. I shut it down. Are you are you now? Is that a new focus of yours? Like I'm I'm looking at you in the producer hat. Uh, you're you're loving the behind the scenes yeah. side of development of creative. Uh, is that the new priority of of Jay Z? Is there more of an interest now finding IP, developing IP, yeah. uh, putting out content that you feel people need to see, backing said talent, said directors, writers? Is that the goal now? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just another part of storytelling. Okay. You know, we, we all we just storytellers. We really are. That's that's it, it, in the most basic form we're storytellers. So whatever forum that we tell stories in, and I've always had a love uh, for cinema. Mm -hmm. If you listen to in all of no, the you're, songs you're from the beginning, you're you know, like it, in, every album has some kind of movie reference, and some some obscure movie reference or whatever. So I've always been intrigued by that, and I've always loved like intricate details of like when people tell uh, uh, a character in a short space without saying this is the character. Mm -hmm. You know, like the moment when when in uh, I don't know it's Godfather, but in Godfather Two when he when he said that. Curtain wasn't open. You know exactly who he was. Mm -hmm. You know he paid attention to super detail. Mm -hmm. He was. Yeah, you gotta pay attention to the details in life. Um, it's called being woke. Once you pay attention to all the details, and that's basically what Jay Z is saying on this one right now. You know, they're giving each other their credit for what they're doing in the movies um, aspect or you know, TV aspect. But, you know, he's basically breaking down how you got to pay attention to every detail in order to succeed. And that's what he's doing as a producer now. Out here just moving loose. Like, he was a... That, 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 that curtain wasn't a open. Clear, characteristic... Get uh, down. Trait. Get down. Yes. You, Get know, down. you know that he's Get familiar down. with every situation. He goes outside. He says, go find these guys. They're probably dead. He already knows. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I will believe in here tonight because the person's gonna try to kill me because of boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. He knew exactly mm -hmm. who he was and what he was dealing with. Like, you know, those sort of those sort of things was always fascinating to me in uh, storytelling. So it was just a matter of time till I got here because I was always intrigued by it. It was. I think, I think you were you dabble. Of course, you dabbled in it back in the day, um, but I think over time. It's cliche. Yeah. Everything happens when it's supposed to. That's right. Right? And yeah. and when you're more equipped to deal with the opportunity, well, the opportunity yeah. presents. As you come to think about it, Kevin Hart did star in Paper Soldiers that came out of came out of Rockefeller Films. Jay-Z was had a short part in the movie where it's <laughs> where Kevin Hart's walking into his studio because they're trying to rob Jay-Z's house. And it was it was it was a I mean, it's a stupid movie, but funny. Kevin Hart was not known at the time. I, I met Kevin Hart at a comedy show before he even made it. Um, you know, I saw him live at Stand Up New York. You know, he was funny as hell that day. He got on me 
you know, being big, fat, and doofy. So, you know, it's, it's he's a very entertaining guy in person from the, at that time. Now he's lived through so much. He's became so huge. When I first saw him in Soul Plane, I was, I was proud of him because I saw him live. But now look what he's become. So now the opportunities yeah. that were always there. And you need the space. Like and it's like when I watched Jay-Z in the No Way Out tour, he was, um, you know, he had just dropped in my lifetime body one and look where he's at now. So these two guys I got to see when they first were coming up. And now I probably can't even afford to go to any of their shows. <laughs> Let's keep it real. You gotta you gotta you gotta mortgage your house for that. But I'm I'm I've never been one to just do it because you know, I had the opportunity or because my name can warrant it. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I could have got a movie deal 100 years ago, you know, mm -hmm. like that sort of thing. Like, no, it wasn't time. I didn't have the space. Now I have a bit more space so I can, like, um, you know, really concentrate on it. I don't want to ever just attach my name to things just, you know, for the... Just to do it. Just to do it. The NASCAR. You know, for, the, for, the, for the announcement. Yes, it's the NASCAR. Yeah. The NASCAR effect. You walk yeah. around and you got... People fall in love with the stickers. announcement. Like, yeah, you got a movie deal. It's like, I love the announcement. Like, okay, what's the execution of that? There's no that movies movie. underneath it. It's the announcement yeah. and it caught some attention and there's no development yeah. or execution. Yeah. All right, uh, this is the perfect time to take a break. Guys, as you see, I'm talking to Jay-Z and it's only going to get better. We'll be right back with more Heart to Heart after this. Okay, that's the ending of part four. Uh, like I said, if, if this gets divided in, into pieces, it's going to be part five coming up. If not, then it'll be in its entirety. So let's continue going. Heart to Heart, Peacock Network, uh, season two, episode two, Jay-Z, July 14th, 2022. Welcome back. Uh, this is still heart to heart, and I'm still talking to Jay Z. Um, when you talk about opportunities, when you talk about you know you and what you're having fun and doing, right? Uh, it brings me to a real interesting side of conversation. It's it's about you now have something that can be forever, right? And I and I think about this shit. So when you look up and you know we we see names in the sky on buildings, right? And some of these names have been forever. Mm -hmm. You look at the Hilton or the Marriott, or you look at the Rockefeller Center, yeah, like all, all of these different the things. Carnegie's. Car yes, Car yeah. all these things yeah. um, that are, are household names, right? And, and for years, these names have lived and they've had a major staple in the world um, and a true impact for wealth. Rock Nation now has that same opportunity. This, this thing is not just a flourishing company, it's, a, it's an ecosystem, it's an mm -hmm. enterprise, right? Mm -hmm. And it fulfills so much from entertainment to sports to advertising to now TV, film development. You're checking the box on so much. Um, we're in a world of, of acquire. We're in a world of opportunity to exit or not exit. Is that a thing of maybe I will, maybe I won't, or is this something that we want in the fucking sky? Is this something that, that we want to last for generations and generations? Yeah, I think that we, we, must, we must understand that it's not mutually exclusive. Like, both things can happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like, if you think about um, Steve Jobs, and Steve Jobs, um, before, uh, God bless him, before he passed, you know, Steve Jobs owned 1% of Apple. I mean, now that 1%. I think this is going to be very exclusive conversation. Like, what he's going to say here is going to be amazing to listen to. And people, limitations come from not thinking about it this way. Uh, I always had the same mindset. Why limit myself? So if I can sell something cheaper and make a profit out of that while still trying to sell the expensive part and make a profit out of that, and it's running concurrent, why wouldn't I do that? Why would I just focus on one thing when I can do both and it's both profitable in time and money for me? You know what I mean? It's not just having one baby, it's having two kids. Just one is older than the other or you know, one is more uh, financially valuable than the other, I guess, you know, if you want to look at it that way. But you know, I, I like this conversation where it goes here. It's very impressive. You gotta pay attention to this. $3 trillion company, right? But if you look at his percentage, you're like, 1%? Ha, 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 ha. So, you know, we, we, we've been trained to look at the percentage of something you own, 
right? We have to get it. We got it. Ain't what you own. You can own a hundred percent of nothing, right? It's so it's 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 whatever the the strategy calls for, mm. right? Like mm -hmm. like Ace LVMH was a brilliant strategic partner for for me. Like mm -hmm. we were doing this out of our office. We we were lucky to find um, the Cartiers who've been in the business since the 1800s. Like there's no there's no there's no one that looks like us in Champagne. It's such a small place. It's Nobody. very small. Not even people that live in the area can uh, penetrate Champagne, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he he'll know better than that, right? You you just it's the people who live there. That's either it. making Champagne or they're building the chateaus around the champagne. And that's, that's it. it. That's the that's the economy. Mm -hmm. So you're not breaking in there from, you know, from New York City. Um, we've done something really amazing and got the attention of some one of the most prestigious brands, right? And it was like a, a beautiful marriage. Like I owned 100%. I could have said, I want to own 100% of this thing. Or I can own 50% of it and take this this and push it even further, right? Um, so well, that was the... that was that was right for that specific situation. But there's some things that you want to own forever, and you want to pass down to your kids. And mm -hmm. I still, again, I own 50 percent of it, so it's still an asset that I can pass down to my kids. Meaning that name on the, you know, on the top of the building that you're referring to. And it's it's really about, you know, not getting stuck on on a specific thing. It's 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 whatever works for whatever situation at the perfect time yes the, the, but I mean, the idea really sorry to sorry to go so long the, the, the idea really is to create these things and these foundations that you can pass on to the next generation so you know we can get those opportunities that we spoke of earlier that we didn't get you know earlier and they can build and take it even further you know it's 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 just important i mean just think about what he was just saying there like he's absolutely right why limit yourself you know owning a hundred percent of nothing is not as valuable as old, owning one percent of a three trillion dollar company like Apple. When he used the Steve Jobs example, but like what he was saying, he received three hundred fifty million dollars for his fifty percent of Ace of Spades. Um, the B B uh, Bernard Arnault, I think I believe is his name, the owner of LMVH, and he's like the second or third richest man in the world right now. So, you know, he made Rihanna a billionaire as well. So to have him, you know, his company purchase 50% and basically take off, take over all the costs and charges and promotion and developing of this brand where they've already done that with Moet, they've done it with Hennessy. And it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. Like, you know, and to be Jay-Z, you know, he got so much money out of it, made his value net worth go up. However, he still owns 50%. That's that's an amazing feat, you know. That means you build a company that you paid for. I believe he paid 180 million dollars when when he bought it. He pushed it to double double in profits to sell 50 percent. You know what I mean? And it was it was because of what was said before the likeness. Jay Z's likeness led to it growing. He became bigger than music. Just his name alone shot up that brand, and it was a music video that showed the the brand and then with him attaching his name to it then he ended up purchasing it and took it over to a to a different level so you know that's that's intelligence and that's business savvy part of it but you you are it yeah. you don't just walk the walk you talk the shit too and that's that's the difference between personnel being put in position and personnel creating said position and then bringing other people's there with them mm -hmm. that's what motherfuckers need to understand about hope and i and i don't think they, they all grab it. Your closest circle, of course, they do. Um, once again, this is why I'm just making sure that I give the flowers, I yeah, elevate yeah. it. Um, so perfect opportunity that. to take a fucking break, man. God damn, what a conversation. It's hard to heart. We'll be right back, man. More conversations with Jay-Z when we get back after this. Okay, I'm gonna say it one more time because the last segment is coming up. Um, just in case it gets divided, this is gonna be part six of heart to heart peacock network season two episode two uh kevin hart interviewing jay-z okay now let's get to the to the next part uh 
Uh, we're back. This is Heart to Heart. I'm still sitting here with the man, the myth, the legend. Of course, I'm talking about Jay-Z. Um, you told me earlier what you want to be remembered as. You told me what you hope that people are realizing and witnessing that you're doing. Um, for me now, right, and, and talking to you, well, I want to ask, what's the, what's the next? Is there a next? Is there a next thing to conquer? Yeah, I mean, like, all these things are just, just extensions of what we really love. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We, we love to drink champagne. We get a champagne company. We love, we love to talk about sports. We started sports ball. So, you know, ownership in the company or, I mean, a, a, a sports team, that, that's only natural for us. Like, we own the box together. Like, mm -hmm. that's just the beginning of it, right? Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll figure out a way to get some ownership in the team at some point. Because mm -hmm. um, that's what we love. I don't think there's any plan to say, yo, let me do, you know, this, this, that, and the third. It's like, you know, whatever things that you're um, interested in, you just pursue. Absolutely. And it's just having the confidence and the freedom to, to know that you can do this. And, and, and the dedication and the passion. Like, you know, there's nothing that, you know, obviously this, this sounds crazy, but I, I really believe this. There's nothing that, that we can't do. Nothing. It's, it's not anything that we put our mind to. That's how strong our minds are. It, That's right. Intelligence and will outdoes a lot of stuff in life. And with, when you having both of them, you make things happen. Just having the confidence as well to, to, to join that club in order to get you there. Some people, like, fall in love with the announcement. So their mind is not on the success of said thing. It's on the announcement and showing people, like, Look, I'm in this space too. Right? They see LeBron create a. Um, I shouldn't be specific because someone somewhere is going to be like, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, I would he's like, you. he's talking I would about take me. It out. Yes, yeah, I would, yeah. I would yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Like, you know, you know, someone sees someone doing something and then say. You know, I want to do the other version. I want to do the, the Burger King version of this McDonald's mm -hmm, idea. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's not based on their love or passion of what they want to do. It's based on getting the look that, yes. that makes people think we're, we're, we're equals. Yes. And we got to get out of that space, obviously, you know, as a people and, and really lean on each other and work and, and talk. You know, we talk on the phone about these sort of things all the time. I share with you the things that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm passionate about and what I'm working on and, and you as well. And, you know, getting advice from one another and helping each other out and, like, really just pushing each other to a, a new that's, space. This that's is our biggest conversation. Our yeah, biggest exactly. conversation is... Yeah. Our biggest conversation, <laughs> and, you know, we can... I'll say the pieces of it that we can say and keep the pieces that we will keep to ourselves, but I think the biggest conversation we have is there's going to come a day when there's a realization between all of our counterparts that kind of sit at a great table realize or to realize that we can go to one table and figure out one thing that we that we all say we're going to do together yeah and i think for some reason that's been the most difficult yeah it's been the most difficult thing yeah. and and i think it's difficult because the assumption of egos from some of the biggest people that would be at that table of i swear to god that was what i was thinking in my mind that's a almost impossible task because of egos and not only the ego part, but another person thinking your ego is bigger than their own. So that limits partnerships, that limits friendships. And especially when it comes to, to high price uh, individuals, their, the ego gets more bloated. So you feel like another person's ego is worse than yours when yours is probably the poisonous one. And that's what Kevin Hart's saying there. And I, I completely, completely see what they're talking about there of personnel and what that person may or may not do. But I think the correct table of men and women and just just the will and want to do something together, it changes a, a huge narrative and it's scary. Yeah. It's scary as to what yes. we could actually yes. do yeah. if we actually sat down. Yeah. And I, I just don't think that, that, I don't think that everybody is in full understanding, even with all conversations. Because I hear it all the time, yeah, yo, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. then there comes time and nobody... But then there's a lot of people involved, you know? It's, it's so many people. There's lawyers, there's accountants, and everyone's, like, pulling on for their thing. You know, no one wants to lose control. 
Nobody. And everyone just like, is he getting more than me? Then this person's doing that. And then, you know, um, but I think we're getting closer. Once we eliminate some of them barriers of like just so many people involved, of, you know, we can figure out. Deep conversation at this point too, because I mean, yeah, if you, you, can, you can accomplish so much with so many strong-minded individuals, but ego is definitely the, the fucking downfall of, of, of a man. I, I suffer from it as well. You know, um, sometimes my ego gets in my way of progress, and it happens with everybody. And what they're talking about is that exact concept. You know, um, some people are gonna want to make more money than you do in the same project as you're fifty fifty in. So it's it's an incredible conversation going on here, and hopefully these limitations do get um, eliminated, so that that people can go ahead and move forward together. I, I like I like this conversation right now. Just join together and join do, together and coexist do, and, and do things. Eat, eat, you know, I would say this, man, uh, you know, me bringing you on this show, it was a talk to you. Like I said at the top, this is unscripted. There's no predetermined dialogue. Um, you know, the easy side of questions talking to Jay-Z, oh my God, tell me life with Beyonce. Tell me all of this stuff. Hey, one time you were at the Grammys. What what did that mean? Tell me. Hey, there's a there's a certain side of expectation within questions that I feel are easy, but I feel like those interviews they cheat you of really letting people see the motherfucking brilliance in mind and the guy that succeeded. This was a conversation to get people an inkling of that. This was a conversation so that people really see this fucking, the, the machine and how the machine operates. And underneath the layers of him being a good dude, of course I'm talking about you, there's a fucking high level of intelligence. There's a high level of figure it out. And dude, you've done an amazing job. And I hope, I hope that this is a way of me giving you your flowers doing my part in my success and saying, uh, I'm not only a fan, I'm not only a friend, but dude, I am, I'm one that respects what you have done. I respect what you have done. Same and here, brother. As Same your, here. As Thank your you. brother, man, I'm gonna say, continue to fucking be an example. Continue to, to be that star that not just shines, but that, that goes and shows other stars how to shine correctly because you're doing a great job of it. And this is an example of how dope you are. You're, you're allowing my star to shine brighter by coming on to my fucking show, man. And this is dope. This is a fucking dope moment for me. I hope it was a Guys, this is what it's called giving your flowers to the person who deserves it. That's what Kevin Hart is doing right now to end the show. Yeah. A thousand times, man. <laughs> and I hope, uh, I hope you guys walk away with nuggets, with information, because a lot of gems were dropped. A lot of gems were dropped uh, that you should pick up. I know I will. This is heart to heart, goddammit. And I just talked to fucking the man, the myth, the legend, Jay Z. Thank you, man. It's dope as well. Oh, you know, mess you up. Fucking stop doing it. This <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the show. That's correct. It's like bitch. Like, no. Where's that? Ask him. Go. So let me just say, man, that was a great interview. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like you know. um, I'm going to be doing more of the heart to hearts and I'm going to do some um, other other interviews from the past or, or present, you know, even in the future. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me. Hit the like, the subscribe, notifications, leave a comment. If you have any questions, you have any interviews that you guys want to see, you know, I'm more than willing to, to go over it. Okay. And I'll, I'll drop the description, um, all the information about myself and stuff like that. So you guys can reach out through email. You know, I'll, I'll put a cash app there just in case of anything, Venmo and everything. Um, but I want to thank you for joining me. You guys have a good one.